Hi everybody, Martin here once again, and today on I'm Probably Playing It Wrong, I'll be probably playing wrong a game called Dungeon Ball, and this is designed by Gabe Barrett with graphic design by Drew Corkle, and um, here is the my print and play preview copy of the game uh, laid out. I got the print and play files from Gabe, and um, I tried to reproduce the game as best I can. Uh, this, by the way, this game is hitting Kickstarter tomorrow. Um, now, I just want to you know, give you a disclaimer that everything you see here is my print and play version of this. Uh, this is prototype, uh, and uh, the uh, the actual game is going to have much nicer components. Okay, so let me first of all give you an overview of what you are seeing here on my table in front of you. This is a one to two player, fast paced, arcade style experience with uh, one to two players as they try to outwit and outscore each other over the course of two halves of play. The player with the most points at the end wins and games take around 45 minutes. So there's two players. Over here we have the red player represented by the red pawn. And over here we have the blue player represented by the blue pawn over here. And each player has a offensive play selection board. And each play bo each uh, board also has a couple of uh, actions that are attached to it that you can always do uh, on offense. You could attempt a juke by spending a momentum token. And I'll explain momentum tokens a little bit more. A little later on. We could also do a big hit if you're on defense uh, and you'd have to spend two momentum tokens. And there's a little bit of information here about when you acquire momentum tokens. Momentum tokens are essentially, um, here in my prototype, they look like this. They're, I've made them little cir circle tokens with a little lightning bolt. But basically, these are ways that you can um, modify, uh, boost your die rolls, boost your die rolls. So this is a dice rolling game and momentum tokens, you acquire them throughout the game and then you can spend these, you can collect these, you can spend these uh, and then you can get some more. So those are what, well, you start the game with three momentum tokens. All right, now um, each player at the start of the game uh, starts with defense cards. Like these guys right here, I'll show you the defense cards of the red player. So these cards are only used on defense. And you'll notice that they are colored, and that will come into play a little later on. I'll show you how these colors work. In addition, each player will have ability cards that you will be able to play at certain points in the game. Like a spin, uh, you have offensive uh, ability cards, like this spin move, uh, this cheat, this air it out. And you also have a couple of defensive ability cards like this. You could cause a fumble, or you could do a block. Now, um, but you have to spend momentum tokens, as they say here, the, uh, the appropriate amount of momentum tokens to be able to play these ability cards. I'll show you how those work a little later on as well. All right. Now, here is the playing field, and this represents the ball. Um, in the final game, this is going to be a football-shaped die with four faces, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, here in my prototype, I'm using a D6, but we will only be using the one, two, three, and four faces. And... Um, I will start here as the red player and I'm on offense. And so that's my goal over here. I want to be able to get this ball to, to one of these three spaces over here in the end zone, meaning that I have scored a touchdown and score six points for that touchdown. Okay. If, uh, the blue player were on offense, then the die would start over here on this symbol here in their, uh, in their side of the field. And then they'd be playing this way. Um, in the setup instructions, you get to choose, um, just like a real football game, you flip a coin, and then based on the uh, coin toss, you figure out which game starts, the, uh, which team starts the game on offense, which team starts the game on defense, um, and then which side of the field is going to be yours, and then which end zone you will be will be your uh, kind of end zone that you're that you're moving toward to try to score a goal. That's all in the setup instructions for the game. But anyway. I'm the red player. I'll be I'll be the red player for the purposes of this demo playthrough, and I am starting on my side of the field, and uh, my ball uh, my my uh, ball die is showing a one, and that's important because that's going to keep track of which down we are on. So again, a little bit of football terminology here. In football, you have four downs or attempts to score or move the ball forward. Now here in uh, Dungeon Ball, 
you will each you will have four downs or attempts to be able to score. And then at the end of that, whether you're successful or not, you turn the ball over to the other team and then they get four downs or attempts to try to score. That's basically it, right? And then we you do that here on this uh, kind of playing field here by virtue of these colored uh, spaces. We've got some red spaces here, some blue spaces, some green spaces. We will show you how all that comes into play in just a little moment. All right, so now I'm going to give you a little bit. I'm going to play through a few turns here, a few uh, downs to give you a feel of how this game uh, actually uh, plays in action. So I'm going to be reading a little bit from the rules here. On a turn, you have four downs or opportunities to score while you have the ball. A set of four downs is called a drive. You will select plays and roll dice in order to move down the field, but the defense is trying to outwit you and keep you from scoring. So a typical turn would play out in the following order. First thing that happens is the defense selects a defense card from their hands of six and places it face down in front of them. So for purposes of this playthrough, uh, I will be playing a two-player game and I'll be playing both sides. Um, later on in this playthrough, uh, in this video, I'll show you how the solo cards work. So there is a bunch of solo cards in this game. A lot of them, quite actually, and there's a very robust solo AI uh, that I'll be showing you a little later on. Okay, so first things first, red player is on offense. I'll put their token here in the center where it starts. Blue player is on defense, uh, and their token here is in the center when it starts. And so the first thing they'll do is they'll take their defense cards, and they will select one. So basically, at this point, the defense is trying to guess which play the uh, offense is going to run. Now the offense can only move this pawn orthogonally, either up or down or left or right. Can't move diagonally. So the offense is going to choose either a red colored play or a green colored play or a blue colored play. So uh, there's a little bit of like, hmm, I'm trying to guess which way you're going to jump here. Well, um, uh, there's two reds over here, two red options, so that's more likely. So um, I think as the red player, I will choose a red color defensive play, this suicide blitz. Okay, so as the defensive player, that's the play I have chosen, and I'm supposed to place this play. The offense doesn't know what I've chosen. I'm placing it face down um, on, my, on my side over here. So that's the defensive play. Now, as the offensive player... As I said earlier, my choices are I could move my pawn up or down, left or right, choosing the color of my offensive play. So let's say, first of all, that I choose a sweep. Okay, so I moved up there, I chose a sweep. Now, at this point, defense is going to reveal their chosen defense. If the color of the chosen defense matches the color of the offenses of the play that the offense has chosen, then here's what happens. So in this case, we have a match, all right? If the color matches the offensive play, the defense receives one momentum token. So that's the first thing. Defense gets one momentum token. Boom, momentum tokens are very good. Um, and the offense loses the number of dice shown on the defense's card. Okay, so this is good for the defense and bad for the offense. So you see here, there's a number two. So... The offense would have rolled five dice normally because the defense guessed correctly what kind of play the uh, offense was going to run. So it's a successful defense. Um, then now, instead of rolling five dice, defense is only, I'm sorry, offense is only going to roll three dice. So that is a significant disadvantage. All right. So I've got three dice to roll. If the color didn't match, then the offense would add the number of dice to their roll. So if this had gone the other way, if uh, this had been, let's say, the offense had chosen a green or a blue play and the defense showed a red card, then instead of rolling five dice, then the offense would have added two to those five dice, making it a total of seven dice. So um, it's very critical, you know, kind of like being able to kind of 
guess or out or or, or just kind of outsmart. Um, like the, uh, if you're on defense, you got to really uh, uh, do a figure out what the what what kind of play the offense is going to choose. Okay, but let's say uh, let's play this out. Let's say that the offense uh, chose red, and so now. I'm sorry, the defense shows red, so the offense is going to roll only three dice. Okay, here's what we got. We have a time icon, we've got a ball icon, and we've got a cleat icon. So first things first, all time icons get set aside. They cannot be re-rolled, okay? And that, at the end of this uh, part of the turn, is going to make us lose one time. So that's that's the first thing there. Now over here, we have a football icon, we have a cleat icon, and we compare our result here as the offense to the requirements of the sweep. Now fortunately, the sweep uh, only requires one cleat icon for this to work. So we've already made, uh, we've already satisfied one of the requirements to be able to move um, the ball forward here on the first down. Now what we do have here is we have the ability to re-roll any dice one more time, as long as it's not a uh, time icon. So we have this um, football icon that's um, not doing as much good right now. So we can set aside this success here. We've already got that. I'll place that there. I'll place this time icon here to remind me that I have to uh, um, put that time down. And now I get to re-roll this one more time and I'm hoping for another um, cleat icon. So I'm re-rolling re it. And I get another football icon. So the reroll was not successful, but at least we have one uh, die that matches the requirement of the play and allows us to move the ball forward one red space. So we'll move the ball forward one red space, and that was what we did on our first down. And then we now move the ball, move the the uh, the football die to the number two, indicating the number of downs. And the last thing I'll do on my turn is I will move the time marker down by one. So now time is ticked down by one. Great. So that gives you an idea of how that uh, first play worked out. Great. And so now we're here as the offense. And now defense has to select another play. So let's see. From here, the offensive player can only go down to this green or left to this green or left to this blue. So they have the choice of either green, green, or blue, not red. So that changes my calculation slightly. Obviously, I'm not going to choose either of these red. Um, and uh, so these require two football icons, so that's hard. These require two football icons. That's also hard. This requires three football icons. That's even harder. Um, uh, so as the defense, I'm like, hmm, this, this, this the offensive player is probably from this position going to choose a green play. So here are my green play um, options here. So I'm going to choose this defensive card over here. Place it face down as the defense. And then as the offense, I don't know what defense, what the defense has chosen. Uh, but I'm looking at this and I'm saying, man, that's super hard to do. So I think I'm going to try a scorpion. But then if I do that, that cuts down on the number of options I have in terms of um, the, my following play. I could only do a red or a blue. Whereas if I went down here to this slant... Um, then I'd have more options for my following play. So those are kind of like the strategic uh, choices that I have for myself as I'm choosing a play here. So do I go here or do I go here? I think I'm going to come back down. I'm going to play conservative ball and come back down here to the slant. So I'm, I've chosen a slant, which is a green play. And I, as the offensive player, I have five dice to roll. And then at this point, the defensive player reveals their card. They have also chosen a green play. So the um, the offensive player, instead of rolling five dice, will now only roll three dice. Darn you, darn you, uh, defensive player. You have, you have successfully guessed my moves. So look at that. So once again, instead of rolling five, I will roll a three. 
So this is my offensive play, and I have to make two football icons for this one. What do we get? We rolled a momentum, a cleat, and a um, time symbol. So that one gets set aside. Neither of these is what I need. I need two football icons, so I'm going to re-roll these both again. Yes! Okay, that was a successful re-roll. Two football icons. And so, now, let's do an ability card. Defense says, hold on there, Sparky. So the defensive player will take a look at their defensive ability cards. They have two at this point. Nope, three. Okay. So let's take a look at those. They could do a fumble. And if the fumble succeeds, then um, the defensive player could now be on offense. They could do a cheat. On this drive, your opponent only gets three downs to score, but they can't play this right now. Uh, the whistle icon means this can only be played. Let's see. Cards with a whistle must be played before or after the offense runs a play. So we're in the middle of a play right now, so the, the timing is not right. We cannot play this card at this moment in time, so we'll put that in the back there. And Or we could try it for a deflection. Um, now, the star means cards with a star icon may only be played once during the game. There you go. So, this is a one-time only thing, this card right here. Whereas, uh, this uh, ability card that has the half symbol means you can play it once in the first half and again in the second half, and then it's out of the game. Uh, whereas, this can only be played once during, during the game. This can only be played once during the game. So, what is this? Deflection. Um, so, basically... Uh, here's what the, the defense is going to do. They're going to try to play this deflection, to go for a deflection on this play right here. Um, so they have to discard two momentum tokens to play this uh, card right here. So here we go. We're discarding two momentum tokens. We're paying the cost for playing this card. And it says to roll the... Um, to roll the uh, black defense die. Based on the result... If we get a this this kind of result, then we are now on offense. So we'll, the deflection was successful. Um, if we get this result, then they uh, the offense will discard a die for their next play. I'm going to say that that's what that means. And I can only play this once. Great. So I'm playing this deflection card, and I'm playing it for the one time that I can play it in the game. And then I'm discarding it completely from the game, fully from the game. There you go. And so, um, now we get to roll, the defense gets to roll the defense die. So we are resolving the defense card, and we get a neutral symbol. So that is neither of the requirements of this deflection card. We did not get either, uh, so it, the, the deflection, we went for a deflection, it did not work, basically, because we got this neutral symbol here. If we had gotten... Uh, this symbol here that we would have subtracted uh, a die, we, we would have caused the offense to discard one of their die rolls. If we had gotten this symbol, even better, we would now be on offense. It would have caused a turnover. But because we got this uh, kind of neutral symbol here, which is not called for on this card, nothing happens. So the deflection was unsuccessful, and we now discard this uh, permanently from the game. Uh, C'est la vie. Uh, and then... The, at this point, the offense would have gotten an opportunity to also play a uh, ability card of their own. Haha! -ha! You think you've got me, defense, with your fancy deflection. Well, I could also go for a cheat uh, or a air it out, basically adding this symbol to my uh, to my roll. Or I could go for a spin move, adding this symbol to my roll. Uh, but because the offense's attempt at a deflection didn't, I'm sorry, the defense's attempt at a deflection didn't work, then as the offensive player, I don't see a need to play one of my ability cards right now. So I'm going to let the play stand uh, as it is. So we uh, successfully acquired at least two, as the offensive player, we acquired at least two of these um, football icons, which means we move, now move the ball forward Two green spaces. I'm sorry, one green space over here. And now it is the third down. Where is number three? Boom. <clears throat> so play continues at this point. Um, and I, I rolled one. I rolled one of the uh, time icons. So now I have to move the time marker down by one as well. Neither side has scored yet. It's the third down. 
and we continue, right? So um, that gives you an idea of like just basic the basic game flow. I've shown you a little bit of the defense cards, the ability cards, how to use a momentum token. The last thing I'm going to show you here is the uh, the solo cards. Okay, so basically uh, the solo cards provide an uh, artificial intelligence and AI that allow you to be able to play against the game. And there's a whole bunch of solo cards here. There's a lot of them. So essentially, I'll show you how the solo cards work. All right, solo mode. To play the game by yourself, you need the deck of AI cards, simulate an opponent. The game plays out same as in multiplayer, but you use the AI deck anytime you need to make a decision about what your opponent does. So whenever a decision for the AI must be made, simply draw the top card of the AI deck. So the AI is on offense. Use the icons in the top left corner to determine which play the AI will select. So over here, you've got up, left, or down. Or if you'd chosen this AI card here, down, up, or left. So basically, choose the first direction that is valid for the current position of the uh, AI player when they are on offense. Um, so obviously, this will allow the AI to select a play from their board over here. And then we would have um, previously selected a defense uh, card for ourselves. And if that card that we played is the same color as the offensive play that the AI selects, then the AI would not advance on offense and simply move the football die to the next highest number. Um, if we, if the colors didn't match, move the football die down the field, the indicated number of spaces found in the bottom left corner. If the play is blue or green, use the number next to the ball icon. If the play is red, use the number next to the cleat icon. So basically, you would move the ball down uh, the number of spaces that match the indication here. Basically, look at what is the predominant icon over here in the play that the, the AI has selected. Look for the matching icon here. Move the ball down the field toward their end zone, this number of spaces. Now, when the uh, AI is on defense, then you would refer to... Uh, this would be the defensive call that they would play. Basically, that would be the, the, the color of the defensive uh, call that they have played. So, all right, I'm going to pause right now. And uh, I hope that that has given you enough of a uh, preview of the game Dungeon Ball. Uh, once again, Dungeon Ball is designed by uh, Gabe Barrett with art by Drew Corkill. And it hits Kickstarter tomorrow. Until the next time, this has been Martin. And thanks for being with me.